trust that we all had a good day. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, again we want to thank you for your watchful care over us throughout the course of this this day father we thank you that you saw it fit to bring us back to your house of worship one more time now Lord I ask and pray that you will rain down a special blessing upon each individual in this church tonight I pray that you will appropriate tonight's message and as our faces differ, so do our level of maturity in Christ. So apply it where it needs to be applied. And we can leave here rejoicing, knowing that we have been inspired, edified, energized. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen called his his tail i want you to open your bibles with me to the book of revelation chapter 12. revelation chapter 12. i want everyone to get a bible tonight revelation chapter 12. his tail revelation chapter 12. are we there I want you to look at verse number four of that chapter. Everybody needs a Bible tonight. Revelation 12, verse four, and I'm reading from the authorized version. And the Bible says, and his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. I want you to just put a marker at Revelation chapter 12. We plan to rip this chapter apart. When, when Jesus gave John the vision, now there are several Johns in the Bible, Two of the most famous ones were John the Baptist and John the Revelator. And the reason why they called John the Baptist John the Baptist because John the Baptist was the first one who began to baptize people. So they dubbed him John the Baptizo. You have John the Baptist and he was the cousin of Jesus. And Ellen White says when he preached Satan feared for his kingdom and he got his head cut off because he preached the truth then you have John the revelator John was 14 years old when he met Jesus 14 he was the youngest he was always the one who was leaning on Christ's breast the Bible says he was the apostle the, the disciple that Jesus loved now Jesus never had favorites but he could reveal himself more to these disciples so this is the same John who wrote the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And he was blessed to write the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse. He was the last of the disciples to die. John Fox's book of Martyrs said that Emperor Diocletian put John in a pot of hot oil. You know, sometimes you're frying something in a little hot oil kitchen, you jerk. Could you imagine being immersed? And you know, couldn't kill him. You know why? Because John, Jesus still had more work for John to do. And it tells me as long as we have a work to do for Jesus, we are immortal. Fire can't burn us up. Gunshot can't mow us down. Knives can't puncture our wounds. And that poet was inspired who said, Though plagues and death around me fly, 
Till Jesus bids, I cannot die. Not an arrow can hit till the God of love permits. So he was sent to the Isle of Patmos, an uh, island that was designed for profligate felons and, and, and people who were just villains. So while he was on Patmos, Jesus visits John. And he gives John now the, the visions of Revelation. Now when Jesus gave John the vision, Jesus could not speak freely. He couched the vision in symbols. One of the reasons why he could not speak freely because the power that was ruling was described in Daniel 7.7 7 as a hideous beast. John couldn't find any animal in the animal kingdom to match this beast. He found one for Babylon, the bear. He, the, the lion. He found the bear for Medo-Persia. He found the leopard for Greece. But when he came to pagan Rome, he just said, dreadful, terrible, strong exceedingly. Now this, Daniel 7, this beast in Daniel 7, 7 represents pagan Rome. It was pagan Rome that was ruling when Jesus came on the scene. It was actually called the Greco-Roman period because Greece was coming off the scene and Rome was taking over. So because this power was ruling, Jesus now could not give John the vision of Revelation plainly. He couched it in symbols. So you'll see beasts in Revelation and, 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 and all these, these winds and, and water. But these are symbols. But what God has done now, God has given his people a key to unlock the symbols. It was never given to the wicked. It was given for those who are sincere, who want to learn. And bear in mind, only the people of God can really understand what God is saying. Because after all, spiritual things are still spiritually discerned. Now, Revelation 12 is one of the most comprehensive and the most important chapters of the Bible. It presents a panoramic view of the long what? Controversy between Christ and Satan. It is also known as the great skeleton prophecy. This chapter, we have the great prophecy spanning for more than 6,000 years from the very inception of sin and the revolt of Lucifer. Lucifer means light bearer. To the final attack of Satan against Christ remnant church now let's look at revelation chapter 12 now let's look at some of the symbols and see if we can unlock it tonight revelation chapter 12 verse 1 are we there verse 1 says are we there and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a what woman now beloved a woman now this is symbols we're dealing with now this woman, follow me now, is the same woman that we find in Genesis 3 verse 15. Now follow me because I'm hidden somewhere tonight. I'm building steam. You should know me by now. Jesus said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. This woman you shall see tomorrow night is not Mary. This woman in Revelation 3.15 is this woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. This woman represents God's true church. In Bible prophecy, woman represents a church. Write the text down. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 20 the Bible says I have likened the who daughters of Zion God's people as to a comely and delicate woman God always likened his people as to a comely and delicate woman a corrupt woman a corrupt church represents a corrupt woman corrupt church are you with me go back to Revelation 12 now verse one says are we there 
and the sun and the moon were what? Under her feet. Now, like, what does it mean now? Under her feet. The sun is the source of light and therefore a symbol of Christ. The son of righteousness, Malachi 4 1. Note then, the moon under her feet, it also symbolized that the woman was clothed with the sun, that the church is clothed with Christ's righteousness. And everyone who becomes a new believer in Jesus, Christ now takes away our filthy garments. And he puts on his robe of righteousness. And when Jesus, God, looks down from heaven, he doesn't see your wickedness. He sees Christ's righteousness covering you. So the woman is clothed with the sun. But verse 1 says, And the moon was under her what? Feet. The moon. The moon under her feet. The church was established upon the word of God. The woman is standing upon something. She has a sure foundation. Note. The Bible says in Psalms 89, 34, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the things have gone out of my, my lips. It shall be established forever like the moon. So the woman is standing firmly upon what? God's word. The church stands upon the word. So you see the symbols can be rightly understood. Also, the Old Testament was the foundation of the church. There are some Christians who say, just call us New Testament church. And what they do is, they take from Malachi. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. And they say, we don't want the Old Testament. Just give us the New Testament. Call us New Testament Church of God. Now these people are sincere. I'm by no means trying to demean or, or to smirch their Christianity. But beloved, we can't have half a Bible. Half a Bible produce half a Christian. I'm going to show you something. When Jesus came on the scene, there was no New Testament. All Jesus quoted from was from Genesis to Malachi. The first book to be written in the New Testament was Mark 30 years after Jesus ascended. When Paul says all scripture, there was no all scripture. So therefore the woman, the church, is upon the, 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 the foundation. Are you with me? The Old Testament. It also symbolized that something was done away with. If I tramp upon something, I'm killing it. So while it symbolized the church has a foundation, it symbolized she stand upon something. Twofold meaning. What is it? Now this fellow was called Uriah Smith. And he wasn't no Joe Blow. This brother was deep. He wrote a book entitled Daniel and Revelation. All of us should have it. Hope you do. If you don't have it, go buy it tomorrow. And I'm quoting him now. Page 549 to 550. The moon can symbolize a symbol of the mosaic period. As the moon shone with the borrowed light derived from the sun, so the former era shone with the light borrowed from the, pres from the present. There had a type and shadow. Here we have the anti-type, the substance. So the, the, this church now is no more bound by the mosaic laws. You have to kill a lamb. Buy a turkey dove. That stuff has been done away with. Are you with me? Now all the symbols can be understood. Except one. Now open your Bibles to Revelation 12 now. Because we're going to take flight here tonight. All the symbols can be understood except one symbol. Look at verse 4. In Revelation 12. I love it. I love it. I love it. The Bible says this. And his what? Tail. Stop there. 
This has thrown Bible scholars for a loop. They could understand the woman and the, and the stars in her head and, and, and so forth. But, but, but when they came to the tail, many don't, many, it threw them for a loop. What does this tail symbolize? His tail drew a third part of the stars of the heaven. Now this star, this, this, this individual in verse 4 represents Satan. It does. Are you with me? So many have deduced maybe Satan has a tail. And that is why every time Hollywood or Hollywood draw Lucifer, they always draw him red. Thank God he didn't draw him black. <laughs> Come on now. So therefore, Lucifer must have a tail. And he must have a pitchfork. And let me tell you something. Satan don't look like this. He always have a tail. I'm going to show you something now. I'm quoting from the book Great Conversy. I'm going to give you the reference in a minute. She says, let's read it together. After three, one, two, three. There is... Keep on reading. He loves that. So when he shows up at your door, you don't know who he is. You let him in. So when he shows up on TV, you're looking for somebody who has a tail. You better realize this rascal, he's no friend of ours. What? Because I'm here. We got plenty of time tonight. I ain't got no school tomorrow. <laughs> now watch it now. Let's read it now. He is what? Please. It is because he has masked himself with consummate skill that the question is widely asked. Does such a being really exist? Satan loves to be painted like this. He doesn't have no tail. I'm going to show you tonight. Let me show you something now. Well, that's from Great Controversy 516. There is only one description we have of Lucifer. Apart from Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. One depiction we have. That was before he fell. The only person who saw him was a little lady called Ellen White. And I'm going to read how she saw him. Exalted angel, then I was shown him as he is now. He still bears a kingly form. His features are still noble, for he is an angel fallen. But the expression of his countenance is full of anxiety, care, unhappiness, malice, hate, mischief, deceit, and every evil. His forehead commenced. His eyes receded. I saw that he had so long bent himself to every evil, uh, evil, even good qualities was the base, and evil, every evil trait was developed. His eyes were cunning, sly, shoot, great penetration. His frame was large. His flesh hung loosely about his hand and his face. As I beheld him, he was, had his hand upon his chin, left hand in deep thought. He appeared to be in deep thought. The smile was upon his countenance, which made me tremble. It was full of evil and satanic slyness. This smile on is one that he wears just before he makes sure of his victim. As he fastens his victim in his sneer, it grows more horrible. She never once said he had a tail. And if you read Ezekiel and Isaiah, he doesn't have no tail. So why did Jesus... Give John this glimpse in Revelation 12 4. What about the tail? Now let's look at the text now. The Bible is its only interpreter. Deuteronomy 28, write it down. The Bible says this 
Look at verse 13. The Bible says this. Are we there? And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of God, thy God, which I command thee this day to do, to observe and do them. There are many people who think that money and prestige make us the head. No, sir. What makes you the head is if you obey God's commandments. That is what makes you the head. Not degrees and, and, and accolades. And I believe Israel was always the head. And modern Israel should always be the head. Israel never borrowed from anybody. They never got a soft loan from the bank of the Amalekites to buy a piece of land down in Canaan. God rained down copious blessings upon them. Ellen White says God, God gave Israel prosperity as a mark that, 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 that they were his people. And I have never seen a poor Jew never seen one and we are modern israel and let me tell you something if you are not the head at your job check yourself maybe you are not observing to do i must assess myself jesus cannot lie if you obey and do you will be the head everything you touch will be like gold like king midas i know what i'm talking about God is not a man that he should lie. If we find ourselves begging and scrubbing, assess your Christianity. Adventist schools closing down. Where do you hear that from? Schools losing our credit. Where do you get that from? Never the head. Not the head. The head prosper. The reason why we are shutting down because sometimes we are not hearkening to the commandments of God. We don't observe to do them. So we can't claim the blessing. And we think we can shout and jump and beat drums and all that stuff. That can't rain the blessing down. You better obey Jesus. So let me move on. Now based on this text, it does not shed light to Revelation. But there's one more text. Go to Isaiah now. Go to Isaiah. Quickly, 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 quickly. What is this tale? Go to Isaiah, the gospel prophet. You know, Manasseh killed him, cut him in half. Because he preached the truth. Lord, he died horrible death. Isaiah 9, 15, we find this. Watch it now. Are we there? Isaiah 9, verse 15, Isaiah says, And are we there? And the ancient and honorable he is the head and the prophet that teacheth lies he is the what no one plus one equal two now isaiah says that lies equal tale so go back to revelation 12 verse 4 now when it says and his tail took a third part of the stars Stars represent angels. Where you find that? Go to Revelation 1. Go to Revelation 1. Revelation 1. Are we there? Revelation 1. 1, 1, 1, 1. 1 verse 20. The Bible is its own interpreter. Revelation 1 20 says this. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the what? Angels. So Revelation 12 4. The Bible says now and his tail took a third part of the stars it said satan used lies and took one third of the angels now this adds a different dynamic to the great controversy now, i'm going to show you something tonight verse 4 his tail represents lies jesus dubbed him the father of lies john chapter 8 verse 44 Every half a truth comes from Satan. 
Every exaggerated truth comes from Satan. He is the father of lies. Jesus says he deceiveth the whole world. John 12, 9. Ellen White calls him the arch deceiver. Great controversy, page 488. Arch means top. He's a top deceiver. So we've learned something about the personality and the character of this arch rebel. Now the great controversy between Christ and Satan has been going on for how long? Only 6,000 years. Now in this great controversy, the weapons are not carnal, they are spiritual. Satan only has two weapons in the great controversy. He has his tail and he has his sword. Only weapons he have, the tail and the sword. Principle 101, the tail always precedes the sword. <laughs> Don't miss that now, that's, that, that's serious. The tail always precedes the sword. The sword just wipes out what the tail cannot wipe out. Now watch it now. The great controversy has five parts. Write them down quickly. War in heaven, part one. The struggle between church and, and the gates of Eden to the first advent, part two. The conflict between Christ and Satan during his birth. Four, Satan attack and persecution of God's church during the dark ages and the apostolic age. And finally, his war against the remnant. Now bear in mind, he only has two weapons. The tail and the sword. Now as you assess these five phases, he uses them interchangeably. Now let me tell you where we are. We are here. We not here. Nor here. Nor here. No, are here tonight. We are at the end. Let me tell you something. I used to play ball, and I was a very good player. I was a forward. And if I don't score, they don't win. I was very quick, and I, was, I had a rare gift because I used both legs pretty well. I was a striker. And I had a coach. I had a personal coach. And he would say to me, not... You will meet players that are more skillful than you, stronger than you, fast than you, but they can't be fitter than you. And he would train us. And we had a training session called Five Speed. And we would start running in first gear. And he said, gear two now. And you hear the, the hoof, the, the, the cleats. Three. And we pick it up. Four, your nostrils begin to dilate now. And when he says fifth gear, you're holding it. And you're holding that speed for almost half an hour. When you finish, you vomit. But came, come game time, and I was the captain, he would do this. And it meant five speed. We would run those guys in the ground. Right now, here, you can't be operating in gear one. This is five speed or overdrive. If you're chuckling here, huh? sorry for you. If you, you, you can't be cruising here, but you, he's not, this is the last leg of the great conference. There is no sixth round. And we are here. Now watch it now. Let's look at round one now. In heaven. Inspiration says this. Satan began his work of rebellion under the angel of his command seeking to diffuse among them the spirit of discontent his tail he worked in so a deceptive a way that many of the angels were one to his allegiance before the purpose was known so he used his tail he began to accuse God hurl the malediction against him you are unjust and after he used his tail, inspiration said he had more than one third on his side. 
And when he, he realized, now I have a strong army, that rascal picked up his tail, his sword. And the Bible says there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought, but bear in mind that the tail precedes the sword. War, and this wasn't some like a psychological Nintendo game, real war. Finally, God cast them out. Round one, the tail precedes the sword. Don't miss a principle. Round one. Round two now. Jesus made man on the sixth day. Brand new creation. Satan realized, hold on now. If I cause them to sin, God will have to pardon us if he pardoned them. Round two. What did he do now? God gave Adam and Eve instruction. What was it? Genesis 2, 15. We're in round two now. What a great converse, round two. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to dress and keep it and said... The Lord commanded man, saying, Of every tree you shall freely eat, that mango tree, that guinea tree, that banana tree. Come on now. That apricot, locust tree was there. Come on now. Jackfruit. Come on now, my brother. All these trees can I eat. Adam. But you see that one over there, that one tree. Don't eat of it. Don't eat of it. Because the day you eat of it, you're going to die. Now, tomorrow night, we're going to talk about that. Tomorrow night. But of the tree of knowledge of the evil, thou shalt not eat of it, because then you're going to die when you eat of it, evil. Now, Satan said now, he used his tail. Verse 1 says, Now, the serpent was more subtle. Of any beast in the field the Lord had made. And he said unto Eve, Yeah, hey, come on now, Eve. Hath God said of every tree? You're not going to die. And the woman said, We may eat of every tree of the garden and read it, you read on down. And you shall not surely die. Brethren, humanity fell with a lie. We fear the sword, but the, the tail has always done more damage than the sword. He used his tail. And that's why we're here. That's why I'm wearing glasses. That's why some of you are losing your hair like me. Wrinkles on our face. Keelers on our skin. We're burying dead cousins, dead nephews. And we're going to continue to bury them until Jesus comes. All because of his tail. Don't underestimate the tail. I'm telling you, brethren. You know how the story goes. They eat. Gave Adam. And sin entered our world. Not the sword, the tail. But what God did now, God had a promise. The plan of salvation. God knew everything. He dwells in the present. Nothing takes him by surprise. So God had a plan in case man fell. The plan of salvation. And the plan was, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed, it shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. Satan heard this and he knew that sometime a deliverer would be born. When Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel, Satan believed that Cain killed Abel, that Abel would have been the Messiah. The Bible says, and Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bear Cain and he said, I have given a man from the Lord. He believed, Satan believed that Cain was the, was the deliverer. And he realized that Cain was wicked. He couldn't be the deliverer. So what did he do? He put down the tail. And he picked up his sword. And he moved against Abel. Kill his brother. In those days, it wasn't a little pebble. The man was strong. He had to bludgeon him, bludgeon him, bludgeon him. We are still living after Adam vital force. The sword. But I've learned you can't hurry God. They thought they sinned tomorrow. They'll be redeemed tomorrow. 
Inspiration says, like the stars of the vast circuit, God's purposes has no delay or haste. You can't hurry God. He works after his own time frame. Charles Persian says, let God's providence fulfill his purpose for your life. So he wasn't the Messiah. So Satan studied the prophecies and he looked and he looked and finally he read where Micah the prophet said. The Redeemer shall be born in Bethlehem if he had though thou be little among the thousand yet out of thee shall come forth unto me a ruler of Israel. He knew that the, prophet, that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Revelation 12 3 said no. And the dragon stood before the woman, the church, which was to be ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Satan moved upon Herod now with the sword. And Herod made a decree, the sword. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise man, a seedling rod, he sent forth to slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. And in all were two years under, hoping he could stomp out Christ with the sword. But Joseph was given a vision. And he fled. And he missed him. Finally, he put down the sword now. Christ began to grow up as a young child. You read the chapter in the Zion of Ages, Christ as a child. Inspiration says, if Jesus had just responded to his mother with a look, you know how mommy do this? Sure. He would have sinned. You don't understand the pressure that was under Jesus. And every time they would tease him about his birth, she said, Are you Joseph, your father? You sure he's your father? And the Bible says, In all points he was tempted. Every time Satan used his tail, Jesus says, It is written. It is written. It is written. See, they realize, well, and this tail ain't working. So finally, Christ was arrested. And he picked up the sword, beat him, spit on him, slapped him, pressed the crown on his head, hang him on a cross. And while he was on the cross, he began to use the sword and the tail. If thou be the Son of God, come down. But he stood there for you and for me. That is why I do what I do, and ain't no man alive going to turn me around. You hear me? No, come, no man alive is going to stop me from preaching this message. You might, might as well go talk to a tree. After what Christ has done for me? No, sir. Finally, now, what he did now, he put the Roman soldiers to guard the tomb. Pick up the sword now. Don't let them come out. He couldn't stop Jesus. So he realized that the sword and the tail didn't work. And finally, Jesus was caught up to the throne. He missed him. Neither the tail or the sword could prevail. Now there's a slogan in Jamaica. If you can't catch John shot, you catch his tail. In other words, if I can't catch you, I'm going to get your child. Or your grandchild. Or your grandchild, grandchild. I'm going to get somebody for you. So what Satan did now, he picked up the sword against the early church. He began to stomp them out, weed them out. Mercifully, he slew the early church, killed them with the sword. He realized the sword thing ain't working. I kill one, 50 join. Let me put down the sword now. And let me pick up the tail, kill James, crucify Peter upside down, cut off Paul's head. But well, this isn't shape the church. They grew. I must change my plan now. I'm going to lay off the sword. Pick up the tail. Look what happened now. Paul says, take heed of yourselves, therefore, of all the flock over you. For I know this after my departing shall grievous wolves enter among you, not spearing the flock. Also of your own self shall man arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples to themselves. So the tale began to work now. And I'm telling you, you read it little by little, stealth, customs begin to creep into the church. Compromise began to be made. Idols begin to be brought in. 
They were taught to look to stains and statues to make long pilgrimage penances to pay a large sum as opposed to look and live. And anybody who challenged now, you pick up the sword to reinforce the tale. Anybody who defended was called a heretic. Kill him. Kill him till they die. But the prophecy predicted that this would only transpire for 1260 years. In 1798, Satan's sword was broken. The sword was broken. So from 1798, the only weapon that Satan has against God's people is the tail. But the Bible says this. Revelation 12, 17, and the dragon was brought with a woman and went to make war. He went to make war against those who heed the commandments of God and have a testament of Jesus Christ. He is not at war with us yet. If we were, he was at war, we couldn't worship here tonight. They would crucify me and kill my wife and my children. Ellen White says this, Watch it now. Break on the verse. You got to get the book now. Five, nine, two. In the what? Soon come in conflict. Not here yet. You shall see the exemplified the prophet's word. The dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ in the soon coming conflict. Not here yet. Soon coming. Therefore, the only weapon he has against God's church is the tail bear in mind the tail precede the sword we fear the sword you better fear the tail it was the tail that got us in trouble in the first place it was the tail that divided heaven now I said to myself hold on now now this may be too advanced for some of you but just stick with it you keep on coming out long enough to this church on Sabbath and Saturday evening, you'll get it. Now I'm going into remnant language now. So visitor, this may be a little bit over your head, but just look at the pictures. <laughs> I said to myself, what kind of... Paul said, now the Spirit speak expressly in the latter times that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. Now hold on now. It doesn't mean you're going to get up and leave the faith. You can be in the faith but doctrinally you're gone. Theologically you're gone. Linguistically you're gone. Humanically you're gone. You're here bodily but you're 900 miles out of sea. And I said, what kind of lie could Satan use to get Seventh-day Adventists to depart from the faith? Now I said to myself, no, Satan is a good devil. I do not believe he'll be successful amongst us in getting us to believe it's not okay to drink liquor. No, he's a good devil. I do not believe he'll be successful in having us believe it's not okay to eat pork or lobster or oyster. I do not believe that he will cause us to leave the faith by having us believe it's okay to practice polygamy. Come on now. Or smoking marijuana. Come on now. So what kind of doctrine could Satan concoct to have people who have been bred in this church to live? What kind of tale? And I sat and I said, the Lord gave me this. This is just some ways he's using his tale amongst us. Here's one. The church is in apostasy, so we must leave. 
it's a lie. It's his tail. And many, and listen, I, I, I feel sorry for these people. And let me tell you something, and quote me, we are responsible for them. Because if we did not abandon the platform, they could not arrive. And even though they have arrived, they are wrong, virgin. Jesus says, let both grow together until the harvest. You're going to see the wheat and the tear in the church. But let them grow. Not saying you should keep silent now. But let them grow together until the harvest. The angels are the reapers. Don't leave. Tarry. You're going to see wheat and tear. But you just hold on. You sigh and cry. Because Jesus will uproot them. The wheat don't go anywhere. It's a tear to get uprooted. We are told the church may appear as about to fall, but it does not fall. It remains, brethren, while the sinners in Zion are sifted out. The chaff separated from the wheat. This is a terrible ordeal, but it must take place. Jesus, Paul said in Romans 11, 4, but, I, but, 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 but what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved unto myself 7,000 who have not bowed their need to Baal image in Israel. And there are people in this church who love Jesus with all their heart and soul and mind bridging all over this church. And they are onward Christian soldiers marching with the cross of Jesus, 7,000 who have not bowed their knees to Baal. And many have fell victim by his tail. Another one. This is a serious one. Little things will be overlooked. Listen, I get it all. You listen, let me tell you something. I get all kind of flack. The offshoots don't like me. They don't like me. And the liberals don't like me. <laughs> so I'm getting flack from left to right. And I have been, listen man, I have been called almost every name in the book. It don't move me. Sticks and stone may break my bone. Not why are you so obsessed with little things? You're too picky. Virgin, if the Bible says it's wrong, it is wrong. I have a burden to make it wrong. And Satan, we have bought this life. Don't worry about that, man. Little thing, God. When, 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 um, when the Hurrials invaded Rome, one of the Romans' son came out and he said, Oh, Hurrial, don't kill me. I am just a little Roman. That barbarian took his sword and whopped his head off. A little Roman, look at my big Roman. We must crush them out. Jesus said this, he that is faithful in that which is least virgin will be faithful in much he that is unjust that in least is unjust in most. I read somewhere a 20 cent seal almost caused the, 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 a, a 20 million dollar jet to crash over the Atlantic. 20 cent seal. Ellen White says in Christ Object Lesson, the importance of little things is often underrated because they are small, but they supply much of the actual discipline of life. There are no, there are really no essential in the Christian life. Everything matters. When I was growing up, my grandfather, God, he's still alive. An ardent, I tell you, man. God bless his soul, man. You know, when I was growing up, you dare not come out your bed and make your bed. 
You want war in the house? <laughs> you saw we coming down part of the sin. He would deal vengeance if you come out your bed and don't make your bed. I said, what? Why this guy losing his mind? Come on now, mama. spread your bed. And I have that principle. And in my house, you don't spread a bed, it's war. <laughs> and you know what happened? At Oakwood one day, I'm having devotion. And grandpa was onto something. I'm reading these our ages. And Ellen White says, when Jesus Christ rose, how the disciples knew it was Jesus. She said, when he took off Joseph of Arimathea garment, the good Lord, he didn't just dash it down. No, sir. Jesus folded the garments. And Ellen White says, that was how they knew it was the master. They don't tell me about little things don't matter. By that foolishness. Everything matters. Leaving dirty plate in your sink is an index in your character. She says, what you can do today, never leave for tomorrow. And you leave dirty plate in your sink, you will go to bed with your sins unconfessed. I'm telling you. And we have been infected by this loose liberalism. Hey, don't get me started in this place enough. Our character building will be full of peril while we underrate little importance of things. Listen, she says, in, and I wish I could preach a sermon. She said on Sabbath, let the shoes be blackened. If you polish your shoes on Sabbath, you're breaking the Sabbath. He said, that's, that's legalism. No, it isn't. I clean my shoes Friday. You better believe that. And that's Sabbath keeping. Think I don't know? You better believe it, I know. <laughs> Charles Spurgeon said this. If they have been faithful in, in that which is least, he tries them in that which is great. If we have looked after a few little children and fed the lambs, he will say, come hither and feed my sheep. If they have trimmed a vine or a fig tree, in the corner he calls them out and sets them among the chief vine in the vineyard and says, see, see to my clusters. You think I just started preaching between people? I, I, I'm doing preaching to one. I remember those days. Ask my wife. I'm doing one. So I'm like, it's not going anywhere. But I had, if I had to get that one, God would never bring me here. You think it's you brought me here? It's providence. Faithfully. Sometimes I'm doing AY to show up. And I'm going hard at it, hard at it. Yes, Faithful in that, son. I'm going to bless you. I know what I'm talking about, church. He says, many a man would have been called to wider fields of labor if he had not been discontented or slothful in the narrow sphere. The Lord watches how we do little things, brethren. And if great care be taken in them, he will give us greater things to do. Elisha poured water upon the hands of Elijah. And then the Lord says, Elijah's mantle shall fall upon his faithful servant. And do greater miracles. Great controversy. So you better write it down. Satan leads many to believe that God will overlook their unfaithfulness in the minor fears of life. But the Lord shows in his dealing with, with, with Jacob, he will in no wise sanction or tolerate evil. All who endeavor to excuse or conceal their sins and permit them to remain upon the books of heaven, unconfessed, unforgiven, will be overcome. Little things do matter, virgin. Press upon you. They do matter. They do matter. So he's using his tail amongst us. No matter how you come to church, come any other way. Now, the Gentiles can do that. See, the Amalekites, Philistines brought the ark upon an ox cart. The Levites, they had to wear staves. The Gentiles can come in their jeans. But 
if an Israelite do that, God will not be pleased, brethren. And I'm telling you, we have to, I beseech you, church, and some of us, we, it's like stick broke in our ears. We are, we are a stubborn people, man. My goodness, it's like we're bent on going to hell. There's no prize in hell. Bring back class to church. Yes. You're coming for God. Yes. And you're going to continue. As long as I'm here, I'm going to continue to say it. You better revoke my permit. <laughs> Bring, if, if you're going before the premier, tell the truth. You'll, you're going dead. Virgin, as a minister of the gospel, when I'm coming in the house of God, I can't come any other way. I wasn't brought up that way. I have to come with my... When I got baptized, I bought a pair of suit at the thrift store. The jacket was down here. Like this. I'm not lying to you. And the pants did match the jacket. And I had a gray tie. But I'm telling you, that's all I had. And it was my Sabbath suit. And as God lived it, I wore that suit faithfully. Sabbath suit. Until one day a brother in the church saw me. And you know, some of us, we get, we're too prideful. Take this jacket. Don't insult me with your old brook. I don't want that. A guy said to me, I have some suit, you know. You want it? I said, thank you. God bless you. The man gave me two suits. Virgin. And I wore those suits until the hole came in them. The Lord bless me now. You're, you're fitted. Come on. <laughs> but we come before God, Virgin. Holiness, man. I'm talking to Israelite now. Gentile, you're all right. Come as you are and God will change you. Bypass this now. Five more minutes. This is a serious one now. It's tale. It doesn't matter what you believe. As long as you believe in Jesus. Jesus. We have, we have bought this tailishness. Don't matter. And you, and you see the underlying current then? De-emphasize doctrine. You preach doctrine, you're hard. Listen, they have called me for, listen, they have called me fanatical. They have called me church splitter. They have called me Ellen White grandson. <laughs> they call me Spurgeonite. God knows what they call me. And I said to them, the faith, the works testify that the faith is genuine. And I say to my critics, I have preached in almost every church except one in this island. You ask one person if I have made them worse a Christian. If they hated Jesus anymore. It's by the fruit, not by a man's statement. Look at the fruit, Virgin. You want apple, you go to apple tree. It is the fruit you know that the thin man is right. So because you preach doctrine in your heart, don't talk about the gift of prophecy, the law of God, you are not Christ-like. Just talk about Jesus. And that is good. You, see, you have to tell me, I know Christ loved me. You got to tell me that. I know that version. So doctrines are de-emphasized now. Some of our campaigns, love. Just claim it. You want a car? Just claim it. You want a house? I'm telling you, I worked on a campaign. God got it. Never forget it. All the man said, want a car? God got it. Want a house? God got it. <laughs> you want a wife? God got it. God got it. God got it. Nothing about the second coming. Nothing about death. Nothing about the Sabbath. God got it. God got it. God got it. He didn't get it. We have far more to fear from within than without. 
The world will say not. Praise God for you. The church, don't bring him back here. That young man, don't bring him back here. I'm telling you. You think I don't know? The hindrance to success is far greater from the church itself than the world religion. People out here will say, that's the truth. We, you're fanatical. I've seen it, Bridget. People have, people who are on drugs come on and embrace me. Thank God for you, young man. Sn they just sn snort running down your face. And in the church, kill you. Think I don't know? I was asked to preach at a church. I'm telling you, the night before the, the pastor pulled the plug on me. And he said to me, we have to do AY. I fired harder at AY. Next Sabbath, they brought me back. They will stop this thing. Many will stand in our pulpits with the torch of false prophecy from the hellish torch of Satan. You better believe it. And finally, the tale unsettled the faith of God's people in the spirit of prophecy. Brethren, let me tell you something. Ellen White does not make a fanatic of people. Yes. People who read Ellen White and become fanatics were already inclined in fanaticism. I've been a blessing to mankind. I'm telling you, I said, Lord, sometimes I said, Lord, I have a, I'm in grad school, I can't even write like that. I spit all kind of verb. The very last exception of very last exception, last exception to look for it will, will be to make none effect the testament of God's spirit. Where there is no vision, the people perish. He will work ingeniously in different methods where to, to, to unsettle the, 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 the people in faith in them. Then this text says, Watch it now, Hosea, Hosea, Hosea. Hosea said, By a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was they preserved. Stop there. I don't like to run past this text. You know why that bread can stay on that shelf down there for so long? Because of the preservative. You know why the food can stay in the container for months on the dock? Because they put a dose of preservative. You take out the preservative, that bread spoil. It is the prophet that preserved Israel. You take out the prophet, the church spoil. And one plus one still equals two. You take out Ellen White from the school, it's spoil. From the church, it's spoil. Your marriage, it's spoil. Evangelism is spoil. You want to preserve this church? You keep the prophet in here. Fine as I close. It's a serious one. You can't have victory over sin. They say you're going to be sinning till Jesus comes. What a wicked lie, man. If Jesus did not sin, why do you think when he comes inside of you, he's going to cause you to sin? It doesn't make sense. He can keep your virgin. Ten commandments. Did anybody kill today? God kept you with that one, didn't he? And he will keep you. He will keep you. So the, the, the lie is, sin and live. But the Bible says, be ye therefore perfect as your Father which is perfect in heaven. You can have victory over sin. You don't have to be a slave to your circumstances. You may have been born on the rough side of Ramadan, but God can clean you up, Regin. Revelation 3, 21 says, to him that overcome it, overcome what? Sin! You've got to overcome by God's grace. I will grant to sit with me in my Father's throne, even as I overcome and I am sit with under my Father's. You can't overcome. You can't live right. You can't get off drugs. You can't come out of the gang. And I'm telling you, listen, when God pulls out those gang, the Bible says the angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him. No gang member can kill you. Because you have angels in camp around you. I go anywhere on this island. 
bullet bounce off. Pew, pew, pew. Sucho. Superman, brother. Of angels. Believe it, but you gotta believe it. What we fear? For you fear? For you who? You know, for him that can kill death and hell. To overcome. We have to tear these texts out. One more text like those. And he know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him was no sin, brethren. Jesus did not sin. And whosoever abides in him sinneth not. Abide in Christ, you cannot sin, brethren. And if we sin, we are not in him. Lies. And we believe it. Whosoever is born of God, that's it. Cannot sin, virgin. For the seed, what seed? The same power that was in Christ is in you now. And he cannot sin because he's born of God. And we use this text every Sabbath. No one to him that is able to keep you from falling. And present you forth before his throne, before the presence of his sin joy. Do we believe it? Jesus can keep you. You can be faithful to your wife. You can be faithful to your husband. You don't have to have sticky fingers. And so the question is now, the only weapon Satan had since 1798 until 2011 today against the remnant bridging is his tail the tail always precede the sword the sword is coming but he's using the tail to weaken the foundation so the question is how how can i be certain then not that i will not be a victim of satan's tail well write it down his remedy we must know the truth. That means you got to study. Virgin, I beseech you, study. Don't stay away from the church of God. As often as the doors are open, come. Come out to prayer meeting. Do you know why I come? Because Jesus has come. I don't care who is teaching. That's the least my problem. Jesus would have his people in church in midweek. That is why I come. You do yourself an injustice. You hurt your own self when you don't come. We must know the truth intellectually and spiritually. The truth must change the way we look, how we relate to people. We have to be, I pray God, and sometimes I'm telling you, I ask God, Lord, I know I can be rough, Bridget. And sometimes it's not a virtue, it's a vice. And I ask God, take away the rough edges of my personality, God. I want to be more like Jesus in everything I do. And sometimes I mourn my inabilities, Bridget. I do. I do. Great controversy. I'm quoting the book. None but those who have fortified their minds with the Bible truth from will stand the last week. You're gonna to have to eat Bible, sleep Bible, pray Bible, quote Bible, love Bible, prove all things by Bible, do all in your powers to make others love Bible too. And lastly, we must obey the truth, Richard. And the Bible says his commandments are not grievous. Jesus. His commandments are not grievous. Nobody is a loser when they follow Jesus. We are winners when we follow Jesus. And we think when we come to Christ, we make a sacrifice. What sacrifice a man make when he stops smoking? Ain't no sacrifice. You're telling yourself you're going to live longer. When you stop drinking liquor, that ain't no sacrifice. You're not hard in your, 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 your liver. When you break off those sexual relationships, 
outside marriage there's no sacrifice you're telling yourself you want contract gonorrhea clap aids syphilis oh they're real there's no sacrifice you know what a sacrifice is when a missionary goes to a man house and the man have one bed he and his wife and his children and it's cold in winter and he sees the missionary he says listen take my bed we'll sleep on the hard floor that's a sacrifice the Bible said Jesus left heaven and he came you know when he came he came 4,000 years when it was weakened by sin you know what a compost drum is when you when you for those who do garden and you throw your cabbage and it rots it turns into mortgage that was what Jesus died into to save us and we will sit there and die in our sins obey Jesus now listen close your eyes hey, we're having a baptism this Sabbath virgin I'm not gonna beg and plead it's your own soul Tonight, Jesus is saying, somebody obey me. You've been coming out to this meeting for three long weeks, Bridget. Come on, man. Our hearts are hard. And tonight, you want to obey Jesus. You want to be in that baptism. Just get up out of the seat and come to the front. Come right now. Come right now, please. Come, come, come. You want to be in that baptism, son? Come, Bridget. Come right now. Come, Bridget. I'm telling you, man. Come, Bridget, you want to be in that baptism. Sabbath. The only remedy for the tail is to come to Jesus. Come, just as you are. Come right now, Bridget. Spirit and the bride say, come. Let him at her say, come. Come just as you are. Bless his name. Come just as you are. Is there one more? Just come, no man. Come, man. The devil is a liar. Come just as you are. Come tonight. The only remedy for the tale is Jesus. Come just as you are. Is there one more? Come, man. Come. Husband, bring your wife and come, man. Come. Mothers, bring your daughters. Come. Is there one more? Come, Bridget, come. Come just as you are. Come, is there one? Is there one more? Just come, come, man. Come, come. you want to be in the baptism? Come, man. Come. The devil is a liar. The tail has no power tonight, Bridget. Is there one more? Is there one more? Come, come, come. Father in heaven oh Lord what more could you have done father we thank you for those who came forward tonight oh Lord you know where they are but tonight they have taken the first step to a new life in Jesus they have stood for you Sabbath, they're going to seal their decision. Be with them, dear Father. May Satan have no victory over them. Whatever their circumstances, fix it. They may need a job, Lord. Bless them with a job. They may have financial problems. Work it out, O oh God. You who feed the sparrows can feed your children. Father, bless this church, I pray. May the tale have no victory tonight. In Jesus' name.